Hello everyone, welcome back again to Spiritual Growth Tarot and Astrology. I'm Denise. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing really well. So this will be your astrology reading for the week of August 7th through the 13th. I'm going to go Sunday to Saturday and cover the, you know, even the days with all the signs of the moons. <laughs> but man, it's looking like a really, really, uh, Act. Maybe that's a mild way to put it. There's just there's a lot of aspects going on, uh, but I'm going to do it as quickly as I can and uh, timestamp the days for you, so it won't be so challenging to go back and look or just you know come back in and skip forward, whatever you need to do. So, okay, without uh, further ado, let me bring the camera down over my table and I'll get this going for you. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Okay, so first off, I have to apologize a bit for I'm trying to get this centered. The font's smaller, uh, the symbols, the glyphs are all smaller. Um, the good news is, is that the, you know, my astrology program, what's it called, Astro Gold or something like that, they, they made an update, they did some updates, and we have uh, the planets that are retrograde, rather than the numbers lit up in red, I uh, they uh, they put the little you know retrograde symbol here and I like that but I guess to do that they had to size down all the glyphs so it's hard I think it's harder to see if you guys I mean I apologize I'll just um, I'll say more rather than just pointing right <laughs> but okay so anyway what a week Oh my goodness. So the most important thing uh, is the, okay, so the sun's here at 14 degrees starting out today for Sunday. And, or actually, I'm, I'm reading this on Thursday, and it's like, wow, the news dumps. Like I thought it would happen last week. Um, and it, I think it's going to heat up even more uh, throughout to the full moon and a few days after. So this entire week is just, I think it's going to be jam-packed. And it seems to all be good things when it comes to justice. So this opposition here, well, first of all, the T-squared the that we've been, you know, focusing in on for the longest time and that will be in effect right here until November 16th, this triple square here, I... Uh, Coming up here from Saturn, because Saturn's up here at the focal, you know, T, T point. That Saturn's at the apex. Saturn's very karmic. Saturn's retrograde, which means more karmic, because we're going back over a point where people who were stuck in their old conditioning, their old rigid ways, uh, are now having to revisit, like, oh, is this really the way to go? So what do we have? We have Garland, you know, we have Merrick Garland, we have the DOJ suing Idaho over uh, abortion rights. <laughs> and then Kansas voted out the abortion ban. And then Alex Jones has literally perjured himself and his attorneys like accidentally sent two years worth of his text, uh, you know, to the prosecution, <laughs> which also included his financial records uh, that proved how much how much he's been raking in, which which leads any sane person to think that the jury, Saturn, will uh, give the Sandy Hook parents the full amount of money that uh, you know that they're suing for. And both uh, Ivanka and Don Jr. went before the New York AG, and neither of them pleaded the fifth for any of the questions, but, you know, 45 himself, he hasn't testified yet, but they didn't plead the fifth, so that means that they said everything that they knew, of course. And uh, Pat Cipollone, again, these are all Saturn themes here. Pat Cipollone, because government, right? Saturn rules the government. Pat Cipollone's been subpoenaed by a federal grand jury, so, you know, that's all about everything he needs to know or he needs to tell that he knows, uh, you know, leading up to the insurrection and everything that happened that, that day and then the following days while he was with 45 and, you know, his relationship there. He did plead the fifth quite a bit with the J6 committee, but now there's a grand jury uh, investigation and he's been subpoenaed. So there you go. And... Senator Whitehouse is going after Kavanaugh. He's he just questioned Christopher Ray. 
<laughs> yeah, so there's that. So this is playing out. Uh, Uranus apparently doesn't like lies. <laughs> <laughs> and it's waking up all waking us all up to the truth, right? Whether we like it or not. That's Mars and Taurus, the direction we're heading, right? So that we're all safe, of course. And so that the dirty deeds from the past come out, right? And I don't mean dirty deeds by Scorpio. I mean the past with people who are involved in money scandals, which is Alex Jones. Sex scandals. I'm thinking something will probably come out with Matt Gates pretty soon. Uh, and, you know, Joel Greenberg, I think, is already flipped. And, yeah, so all this political stuff is finally breaking free. And I think we can um, <laughs> give credit to where it's due here with the moon and Sag, because Sag, Sag wants to get to the truth. Now, sometimes it wants to just be its own uh, high and mighty thing. But check out this trine here to the sun. Now the sun will illuminate and this week it's going this direction. That's why I put the little 20 degree mark here because by Saturday it'll make it to 20 degrees and then it's going to be shining the spotlight straight over here more and more and more intently. So it'll go even into you know this following week not this week but the next week and um, you know, we'll get beyond the 13th, so probably the 15th we might have an exact square here, I'm thinking, somewhere in there. Um, and then Mars will be out over here, away from the, the, from this mix. But this 15-year, you know, this is a 15-year thing we've got going on here with Uranus um, and Taurus. Conjunct the South Node brings it, it, it's that energetic quality and consciousness that we are going to have for... Um, until the next, you know, the next Uranus conjunct the North Node. Yeah, and that one, of course, will be in Gemini. Um, I'm thinking, you know what, I'm not sure. I have to look that up. I have, oh, I have a list somewhere about all the conjunctions from Uranus. I just don't have it close by. But, um, yeah, so anyway, remember the grand square we were talking about last, last week? Well, this is our build-up to the full moon. And the truth is coming out, right, as to everything that needs to be uh, healed. Sandy Hook parents, uh, the, the one mom, was her name Joanna? She, she stood up and said, or she, she sat there and said, uh, my child existed, I exist, I'm here. My child existed. I can show you the birth certificates. Why? Why would you say he didn't exist? And he, and of course, he wasn't, you know, taken out when he was. And Alex Jones is sitting there like an idiot. So, illuminating, illuminating the truth, the truth about healing that has needed to happen for quite some time here. This has been going on for a very long time. Very long time. Alex Jones makes somewhere between $100,000 and $800,000 a day by telling lies and getting people emotionally um, invested in baloney. And then they spout, he spouts and they spout all this like 1984, you know... <laughs> crap and it's exactly what they're doing you know they're telling lies they're spreading lies they're conspiracy theorists so uh, for for sunday for you know kicking off the week here the, this is what's going on right this grand fire trine to bring in the truth the power of the truth that should help a lot of people uh in any type of um airy situation where they're where they haven't been able to move forward where they have felt defeated where they haven't been able to assert their individuality or they have but then there's been a louder blow horn you know like uh like alex jones literally with that blow horn oh yeah in those two years of text you can bet everything from the january 6th committees in there 
or, or I'm sorry, the January 6th insurrection is in there, which um, the J6 committee has already subpoenaed. So there's that. Aries also doesn't like being left out. Aries can be impulsive. So maybe there'll be connections as to people who have, you know, run off their mouth like Alex Jones, who has literally no filter and he's racist. And, you know, it's like, did, did we need another Rush Limbaugh on the planet? No. So anyway, abandonment issues are up for healing. Uh, letting go of the need to come first are up for healing and getting inside your personal deeper truth and then politically like I've been saying the truth is coming out now this Saturn uh, I'm sorry not Saturn what am I saying here Venus and Cancer opposing Pluto up here in Capricorn and Venus of course is going to keep going this way and then we'll have an exact opposition when that happens, maybe that happens by the end of the week. I'm not sure. Um, I don't. I don't think so yet, though. I. Um, I think it's. It might be the following week. Uh, it might even be this week. We'll see. Hold on. Let me look. Yeah, you know what? Because Venus gets into Leo. Oh shoot! It's uh, if you guys. It's tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Okay, so let's talk about Venus opposition Pluto. It is intense. It has to do, of course, Venus has everything to do with things that bring in harmony, things that unite us. And with Cancer, we're talking children and family, right? Uh, it makes, Venus makes comparisons so that we can get in touch with our values, right? And uh, it has to do with all of our relationships. It has to do with our self-worth. It has to do with our um, attitudes towards women and, you know, fem feminine, the feminine, you know, rights to equality, all of that. But most of all, it has to do with pleasure. So there could be some intense Pluto, intense experiences with pleasure that you haven't experienced before, like the higher, you know, joys. And maybe you've gone through a lot of the painful lows and you've done a lot of deep work. And now there's this possibility, this um, breakthrough quality that can happen to where there's more of the joy. And then what always happens after that, at least in my experience, there's a lot of high and low, and then there's a balancing out. And Venus does want to balance out, of course. So, but when we're going through, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> so the days leading up here, um, which, you know, you're probably feeling right now, and I do remember it was in effect last week, um, earlier this week. Again, I'm always a day, a few days ahead here. So just remember that aspects leading up to an exact point, we feel really strongly a few days before and a few days after. Now, of course, the exact, you know, uh, opposition or exact ap aspect, whatever it is, is, is very strong. But there's quite that lead up, you know, to it. Just like, you know, the full moon, you, you guys know how it is. Like after it's like legally full, then it se the energy seems to um, dissipate a little bit. So, but anyway, you might have some, if you're in a relationship, you might have some new uh, experiences of, of pleasure and uh, communication and strong, like a stronger type of a bond. Um it could be that it's um, more passion in your work. It could be that you literally fall in love with someone who's very powerful and, and seems like a strong person. Um, 
And then sometimes it can be because we're in that mirroring effect, you know, where oppositions always are. There's a confrontation with uh, something on the other side. It can just be that there's um, someone who helps you wake up deeply, you know, whether it's a negative or a positive experience. If it helps you wake up, it does turn into a positive experience eventually, right? There could be some negotiations because Venus rules money. There could be some negotiations that are very powerful for you this week. Uh, yeah, or you might be approached by somebody who seems to be more powerful than you, and you make a decision to join forces with them. There, there are those possibilities with this aspect here, which is really nice. Uh, okay, so then also today... Of course, we have Mars squaring Saturn, right? We have the you have Uranus North, but look at this exact here: twenty-two to 12, 20, 22 degrees twelve minutes to twenty-two degrees twenty-six minutes. Of course, Saturn is the stronger planet here because the slower moving planets are always holding space for longer periods of time for us to get our lessons. Is what Saturn's all about: trying to master something in our lives. So wherever this, you know, lands in your natal chart, it's really important. Now, with Saturn square Mars, it's kind of like having uh, the brakes on a little bit, you know. But it can, the positive side of it is that we can move away from any old past conditionings that kept us kind of stuck, kind of rigid. Um, maybe even just something simple like... Um, we just start thinking outside the box with, um, you know, Aquarian energy here. Because, you know, Aquarius always wants to see the bigger picture. So maybe Mars and Taurus has finally gone, oh, yeah, you know what? If I do want that, I have to do this. And then you're willing to change, <laughs> right? Uh, Taurus doesn't like to change. Mars is all about change, constantly moving forward, changing. And then uh, up against Saturn, Saturn's like, oh, well, let's test it out. And sometimes we bump up against other people, especially in government positions, governmental positions, and um, make them get to work. Or you find out, oh, they have been working, like in the case with Merrick Garland. <laughs> he's, he's showing us his work. Um and, you know, that we needed to be patient. So we're going to have that, you know, that breakthrough here. So, yeah. Now, the Saturn retrograde isn't going to end until October, October 23rd, I think it is. And, yeah. So... But it's in this tight orb, you know, with Uranus here, because we're only, we're only talking four or five degrees. Now, Uranus is going to go retrograde later. And, um, yeah, so that's going to, that's going to shift. But, so this is at, if, I feels like we're kind of like at the fever pitch, you know, the critical point where things are breaking through. And if we look to politics, to what's coming out on the news, we can, we can see that that is, ca you know, the case. Um, I mean, even the uh, the announcement about Breonna Taylor. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. So there's four um, former Louisville police officers that have been charged with her killing in connection with the killing. Um, because they, I guess it turns out they falsified some records. Um, when they did the search warrant, like they did these four search warrants, and then the fifth one came from her or for her house, but it was 10 miles away. It wasn't in the same area. And, uh, and then I guess these Louisville police officers, they tried to cover it up too. So, so there's that. So now there's going to be a big old, you know, investigation. And they, well, they've been charged. And now I guess it'll, it'll go to trial, right? So for a while, we have to say alleged. <laughs> But we knew something was wrong. It wasn't a case of just her being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It, this was a target, right? It, I mean, it, 
10 miles away. This is crazy. So, okay. So this, for everything I'm speaking to now is this overview for the entire week. And we can see things tightening up in orb. And it's going to, so that means it's going to intensify. I... Um, Let's see, 24, 26, 25, yeah. This aspect of the architect here, so this sextile here from Pluto to, to Neptune is working spiritually, the power of spirit, to bring down what matters most here with Venus in Cancer. And that is going to tighten up even more as, as Venus moves this way and gets into that 26-degree orb. I mean, it's already it's already joined with, conjunct, whatever you want to call it, but it's going to get even tighter and uh, more powerful. So if we've been, all of us who've been working spiritually, it, our uh, power will be increasing. Your personal power will be increasing because you're, you're connected to source energy. Now, Mars here notices at 22 degrees, and as it moves this way, and gets in that exact con or, uh, trine there with, with Pluto at 26 degrees, there you are, even tighter there too. So Mars and Pluto together can be really powerful because it gives you the energy to align with the you know your deeper truth, your deeper authority. And yeah, with this little, uh, I'm not going to bother coloring it in, but see this little semi-square here with the moon this morning? There is some action to get to that powerful place that needs to be taken. So even though it's a Sunday and you want to rest, if you get up, you wake up early, and you feel like there's something you've got to get done, trust your instincts and go for it, because the moon will be those, uh, those moods that will get you to go and look at something. You know? You'll have some uh, experiences of direct guidance. Now, it could be a dream experience that helps you to wake up and go, oh, okay. Same thing here with, um, well, here, I'll go ahead and color it and see that Jupiter to Mars, same thing there. Okay, so action, especially with Mars, action for healing, action to expand, action to grow yeah and then jupiter is in that same that same aspect here to saturn okay and jupiter and saturn they are our builders of the zodiac so yeah <laughs> i can't i just have to keep saying go for it we do have a little adjustment here to the south node i uh, but th it's just this morning, well, no, it's going retrograde. So no, it's not going to get any tighter orb. Well, actually, shoot, what am I saying? The nodes go backwards. Nodes go towards, yeah, and this is going backwards too. So, okay, eh, it could get a little tighter, yeah. Then what this is about, or or I should say what it is about, the adjustment would be, you know, because Scorpio wants to go deep. Aries wants to just go, get it done. But the fact that Chiron is retrograde, and it's only 8 degrees away from Jupiter, and this aspect, of course, here is all about healing our deepest wounding to get to our deepest gifts. You know, search for that buried treasure and keep uh, excavating and working, right? And using it, sharing your gifts then what, uh, what happens, what can happen, is more and more can come up from the past. Past life wisdom gifts come through. It could be something new that you develop, but you've gone deep to get to it. Yeah. Mercury is not making one darn aspect this day. And being in Virgo, though, I'm feeling, I actually feel like that's pretty powerful because it's assimilating information. Virgo assimilates. Well, any of the mutable planets, you know, um, can do that. Uh, you know, Virgo, Sag, and Pisces can, uh, can uh, be good for assimilating. But Virgo kind of sits still and assimilates quietly and makes all those distinctions and connects all the dots and tracks things and, 
you know, tracks patterns, and so does Mercury. So Mercury and Virgo is even stronger. Okay, so let's go to Monday uh, and see what's different. Nothing. <laughs> no, that's not true. Same thing going on here. The, the exact opposition has happened. So everything I've just spoken to about Pluto and Venus, that's there. Uh, everything's, yeah, nothing different here. This in conjunct is still going on to the south node. About the only thing that we can focus in on to um, talk about, actually, is right here. So, of course, the moon has moved to 25 degrees Sag, and it's in this in conjunct to Venus. So it's talking to Venus going, it's our emotional bodies, it's our moods talking to Venus going, mm, what do I really want that would help me to grow? What might help my intuition, psychic abilities, um, which of course is always healing your emotional body. That's how it works. And if some people are born psychic, it's because they've done the oops, done the work in their past lifetimes. You know, you have you hear experiences. I hear them all the time when I talk to people. When I have sessions with people, and they tell me, you know, what happened when they were three or four, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> little ones don't usually, but then again, you know, I think all little ones are very, very sensitive. But to be able to, um, you know, articulate to their parents exactly what they were seeing and sensing. And of course, they had parents that accepted it and understood it and, uh, you know, nurtured that. So <laughs> it, it grows and grows. Some kids shut it down because their parents don't accept it. And that could be one of the things here, because Venus in Cancer wants to stay safe. It's very family-oriented. Might be a little afraid of moving ahead that quickly. So if you have little ones, and they have little psychic kids, nurture it. <laughs> so with the adjustment there, it might, yeah, there, it's like, the, it, it's a challenge between being totally free and in your own, um, you know, in your intuition, speaking up, believing in yourself is what the moon in, in Sag is all about, Sagittarius is all about. Um, but there could be trouble, especially if you have a family member who doesn't believe you, and they're into a bunch of patriotic baloney, because either one of these signs, Cancer or Sag, can be a little too patriotic. Um, and into religious dogma, that can happen. Hold on, I've got a tickle in my throat, and I'm going to get some water. Okay, so so yeah, that's about all I have to say there. Uh, Venus should win out, Venus and Cancer should win out because of the, um, well actually it's not all I have to say, this last little part, <laughs> because Venus is I don't know that it's stronger than the moon, but it's going to sit here longer than the moon is going to, you know, the moon's going to get into Capricorn pretty soon. And then Venus is in this exact opposition to Pluto in Capricorn already. So Venus is taking some power here, right? Venus is vibing with, with power here, which is a good thing. And so stand your ground if you need to, right? Now, Mercury here is also doing the same little trip with Jupiter. And again, right? Jupiter wants to go in Aries. Wants to go. Jupiter always wants to go anyway. Jupiter rules Sag. But in Aries, it wants to go now. <laughs> Thank goodness it's retrograde. Because Mercury's over here holding space for like, well, but what if? Or what about? Or wait, hold on, hold back. Let's let's get this done right before we start, right? Let's get things organized. Virgo is primo divine order energy and consciousness. I just love it. So that's up for the day. Now Jupiter is all also uh, 
I have three inconjuncts today. It's also talking to the uh, south node, so the wisdom of the past. And it could be like, oh yeah, I remember when I just jumped ahead and impulsively did what I wanted, and then I had to go back and, and look at my mistakes and go, oh, shoot, you know, right? I did it just yesterday, and but it was a verbal mistake, but, which I'm famous for. <laughs> I said, I said something about uh, what's his name, uh, Jared and his, uh, and I know it's a it was a two billion dollar deal with MBS or with the Saudis. I'm pretty sure it was MBS himself, but I said two million, and it's, and it's like I'm so grateful for my one, um, or so far just one viewer that said it was two billion. <laughs> like, yeah, we need to make that point because I said it wrong, and I don't know why. Maybe my, it's hard for my brain to grok uh, billions. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, all the other aspects are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, yeah, look at that sun building up the opposition to Saturn there. Like, like I was speaking to. but So I'm going to go ahead and move then to Tuesday because I don't see anything different there. And I really need to spend some time on the full moon when we get there for Thursday. Okay, so for today, the, uh, the moon is in, so 10 degrees Capricorn starting off early morning, 5 a.m. Pacific time, trining Mercury in Virgo. I love it. And, of course, there would have been an exact trine earlier in the morning. So if you wake up like 4 a.m. and you feel like getting lots of work done, this is why <laughs> the moon's going, uh-uh, come on, let's go. We've got things to do. We have things to get done. And Virgo energy is all about work and service and details and structure and order, like I said, you know, divine order. And we're still in that... Um, that in conjunct to Jupiter. So we're still get digging in, getting the details. Makes me wonder about what's going to happen on the news there. Still the in conjunct going on here to the south node. What happened in the past, right? What happened in the past that we need to know about? Now, it's really interesting. Do I have it? Hold on. No, 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 no that's where Garland and Trump. It's in my kitchen. I got I got guidance yesterday about uh, Alex Jones's actual birth time, so I ran his chart, and well, even if I didn't know his birth actual birth time exact birth time, uh, we have uh, it, he wherever we have Chiron would not change uh, you know over like a day like that. He has Chiron. He's having his Chiron return coming up. That's what's happening. So that's, you know, it happens to everyone about 50 to 51 years old, and it's it's getting in touch with your deepest wounding. So, um, I don't know if he's going to go that deep, because he tends to just go outward, and those guys have to learn the hard way. But it made me think of that when I, it made me think of his chart when I saw this. And Jupiter's there, like, blowing it up in the news. So, yeah, let's see, what else for today with the moon? Of course, it's squaring Jupiter. Oh, well, yeah, no wonder I was talking about that then. Hold on. See this square here to Jupiter and Chiron, right? And the, the more the moon moves this way, the deeper the square will be to um, Chiron. And right now it's squaring uh, Jupiter. So, shining the light on people who have done things in the past, the moon in Capricorn can have the effect of helping you integrate the past in order to um, move forward to helping you get to what you want. But if you've been dark and hurt other people, this Capricorn moon squaring will definitely bring to light because we have a contact point here which will bring a big challenge for somebody like Alex Jones yeah interesting 
And remember the backdrop, you know, with this, because this whole, this grand square is still going on. That's why, you know, I said last week, it's going to be one hot month for us here in the USA. Uh... And even where it's cooler, you know, uh, as far as the temperature, temperature like that, uh, even where it's cooler, it's still the issues are still the same, and they're still heating up uh, in in other ways. Might not be temperature wise. Then again, you know, you can have extreme colds that are uh, cold temperatures that are just as destructive as the heat. Oh, let's just try and send lots of peace to planet. To, to Mother Earth, just as peaceful as we can stay within, that helps the Earth, right? Because we're all part of her. So, okay, let me see. Is there anything else? Of course, you can see that trine down there, too, um, and that will increase um, down here, right here. Not to the moon, but to Uranus in the North Node. Because, of course, as the moon gets to build up to that 18 degrees, that this so this is the beginning of this exact trine here. And trines are graceful, easy energy where it just flows. So again, focusing on waking up to everything that you want and and align your try to align your focus and your moods. Uh, to to going after it. Now, the moon does rule the public as well. So it could be sometimes that you see something on the news or you read something or somebody, someone else says something that, you, that gives you an idea to go after what you really want, and that helps you to wake up. So be open for those. Like the, uh, Uranus here is famous for aha moments. Yeah. Okay. So everything else is the same as the um, the week's overview. Even that Saturn or semi square there. That action to um, get yourself free and in the healing zone. The sun's just moved a degree, but it's that building exact opposition to Saturn. So let's look at Wednesday. And the moon is conjunct Pluto. So that building up is very powerful. So the, remember, in between Tuesday and Wednesday will be all about getting in touch with your power. Now the moon is trining Mars. And Mars is, in evolutionary astrology, like Pluto's little brother. <laughs> it moves us towards what motivates us. And with Pluto, of course, it's about being, you know, deeply connected to yourself. And we've got, I mean, this is a, this is a, you know, the stellium in Taurus down here trining Pluto and the moon. My goodness. I am feeling like if you guys don't know what you want yet... You're gonna know by now, and it's gonna you're you're gonna start moving towards it. That moon to Mars can really get you going, really get you going. It, it can get the most um, shy people out of their shells. It can I uh, get get you moving towards building something that can really serve you in the long term. Right, because we've got long-term goals going on here, and of course, the moon will be over here by the time it's full, which is, you know, coming up like right away. So this day, early this Wednesday morning, is really powerful. Very, very powerful, and the moon is in this opposition to Venus, and it's going to tighten up even more. See how Venus is now at twenty-eight. Um, Venus does move into Leo. Um, when is it? I think it's, yes, yeah, the next day. Oh, that's right. It's the same as the, the full moon. Yeah. Um, yeah. So,
Yeah, definitely. There's it, this is just so it, this is really really important here. This opposition this can be a confrontation to really get in touch with what helps you to feel safe and secure and nurtured and going towards what you want. What it, what is it that you want to grow? And keep working on that. Keep going for it. Because everything is here to support you. And all the other aspects are the same. So um, it's just that the moon, now the moon has shine, is shining light, is illuminating this um, aspect of the architect here. So now the moon is, is sextiling Neptune and trining Venus. Everything I just said, go for what you want because we've got the, you know, the spiritual law that can open up with the with source energy here at the fulcrum point and the moon bringing passion and uh but also like self-responsibility because Capricorn is all about taking control of your life. It's all about your your own self-responsibility. And bumping up against uh, Pluto, it, it's, it should help you feel very powerful or, or know that you have the power to create what it is that you want to bring into your life. And have it. Have it. <laughs> With all this Taurus energy here. To have it. And that looks to me like what can be growing within you. And you can have major breakthroughs here with this opposition. The opposition can be a confrontation, but then later on a breakthrough. So now let's go to Thursday. I skipped ahead to the time that the moon is full. So this isn't early in the morning. So, But everything that I have just spoken about for Wednesday, just apply that into Thursday early morning and um, or late night you know and then by early morning just know that the the moon has crossed over and has moved into uh, Aquarius and then by 6 36 p.m pacific time pacific daylight time the moon is now conjunct Saturn and this can be a full-on here we go a full-on emotional confrontation with whatever it is that you need to free yourself with the sun and leo here so when we have a full moon the um, and it's at 19 degrees 21 minutes the sun is always opposite when we have a new moon the moon is here always conjunct the sun so every two weeks we get a new moon and every two weeks after that we get uh, so every month we get a new moon and a full moon but the new moon will start to kick us off, and then two weeks later we have the full moon, and then and then we're then we have the assimilation process. You know, so new moons are about planting seeds. Uh, full moons can be about releasing the past, and we have because you know the moon is now conjunct Saturn. Remember that T square. Remember the grand T square. All of this. So everything I was talking about in the. Um, you know, in the opening, in the overview for this week, is now in full bloom. So whatever you need to to, to free yourself, releasing the past. I, the spotlight's coming from the sun here. Mercury, the messenger, is bringing in details about how to change because it's trining over here. See how Mercury's at 18, I'm sorry, 12 degrees, 18 minutes over here to the north node. That, that's like super important there. Uh, Mars is moving away, but, eh, you know, when things are all conjunct in one sign, I tend to kind of glom the energy together because they're talking to each other. So, let's see. Yeah. Definitely. This is all about the future, moving forward to the future, and you've got the spotlight from the sun guiding you <clears throat> to think outside the box. So let's focus in on Aquarian energy for a moment. So it's objective. It's not subjective like Cancer. Oh, and the moon, notice the moon, what am I saying? Venus. Notice that Venus here 
is still in the opposition to uh, to Pluto. Well, here instead of I'll just show you Venus to Pluto here. But notice how Venus is in Leo now. So now we're I'm going to talk about the polarity between uh, Venus and Aquarius because they are polar opposites. Okay, so. Let's go back to Aquarius because we've got the full moon coming in, and this is the focal point. The light's shining on this focal point here. So Aquarian energy is different. It's original. It's tolerance versus um, racism. It's tolerance versus uh, dogma. You know, Aquarian energy, Aquarians... In, unless there's something wrong, you know, with them, unless they've been deeply wounded and haven't gone through the work yet, and they're checked out and, you know, um, not in their heart energy with Leo, with the polar opposite of Leo, they usually are very, very humanitarian, and they don't like anybody not being treated humanely. And... They don't like any narcissistic energy going on. So, so there's this light coming in. There's this full moon illumination. I really expect uh, more news dumps all week long. I really do. And something may come to fruition uh, Wednesday night to Thursday night, Friday, you know. Um, Aquarian energy, a full moon in Aquarius can also bring in new friends or a new group, a new connection with a new group. It could bring in uh, the heart energy from Leo that, that helps us to um, make a decision coming from, you know, aligning with the forces of love. Versus, you know, just our own, uh, what do we call, selfish interests, you know. Uh, but because it's with Saturn here, it could, be, it could be kind of tough. And especially because it's squaring Uranus and Mars, you know, and Taurus here. Uh, we could have just something disruptive, but... You know, expect the good rather than the bad because I'm um, so far these. <laughs> if this week is any indication of what's you know the lead up of what could be with the full moon, it it, it could be great because you know yeah we did I mean we did witness in in Japan I think um, was it earthquake and a volcano I mean uh, that that's not good uh, the, I know there was. Or was the volcano in the Philippines? Oh, I might have it all mixed up. I just know that there was an earthquake and a volcano, and I don't know which was which, but I know there was one, something in Japan and some in the Philippines. So if you guys remember, drop it in the comments and clear us up on that, because I don't remember. But that would have been the Mars-Uranus, you know, conjunction quality. Um, and my goodness, the floods in Kentucky... That yeah, that can that's more like the Neptune and Pisces at those uh, at that later degree, and that that's the South Node in um, in Scorpio too, that movement of movement of water. Yeah, that did happen. So, but on on your uh, on your personal level, um. There can be more distrust with um, the man. And with it squaring Uranus and Mars and South Node here, um, it, there can be Aquarian rebellion. Like I was saying, you know, I've been saying for a while that, that um, Uranus... And Aquarian energy tends to bring out the, the rebels and the wizards. So it's all about how you want to use the energy. And if we're going to rebel, we just have to do it in a peaceful way that doesn't hurt anyone else. I, you know, physically, I think I might be guilty of hurting politicians um, with my words. 
because I've just had it. <laughs> my goodness. But I would never do that to somebody in my, you know, in my, um, in my life. I, I just, yeah. But yeah, I've, I mean, I've had it with Alex Jones. I've had it with the Trumps. I've had it with um, all these people who have um, enabled them. So, you know, we have to have our healthy boundaries. But anyhow, so with this full moon, there can be a release to let go of something that hasn't been serving you in your highest good with this configuration here. And be careful, though, getting out and hanging out and being outside and being out in the public because with the full moon conjunct Saturn here, there it is with the square. The moon is bringing more energy to this square which can be kind of um, explosive energy here. You know, we got to remember Uranus still squaring the south node in Scorpio. And um, Mars is moving away from it, but the moon is triggering things now. So be careful. Just be careful when you're out there. So let's see. Is there anything else I want to say about this full moon? In overview, I just, I just think it's more about releasing the past and getting into what you want to um, um, be with in the future, right? What do you want to cement into your life? What do you want to build? And, and all the aspects are there to help. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so let's see. i uh, I think that I think that's about it. Everything else? Well, there's a. Did I was that there yesterday? Hold on. No. Okay, this is new. But wait, let's see. Is it here for Friday? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna move to Friday, and I want to focus in here. Notice the moon's on the other side of Saturn. Some powerful lessons about building what you want in your life have probably come through, but notice how Pluto here is in exact trine to Mars. So, a free flow of energy to manifest, right there. This is These transits, you guys, are so good for any type of art. And like I always say, I, I don't judge what art is, but, you know, great songs are coming out, <laughs> beautiful art is being made that you can buy and have in your home and big shout out to Mimi over at Flower Tribe Creations over in um wait hold on I think I have a card right here. Did I miss it? Yeah, hold on. I absolutely love her art. She does and she does batik everything. So right there. Um there's how you can get a hold of her. On her Facebook page you can see all of her offerings and there's her phone number if you want to get a hold of her. She's amazing. Uh, and so is Peg Owens on Facebook. I think I've talked about her before. She's known as Pegasus in our, in our group here. So you can always uh, hit her up. She makes wands and all different things. <laughs> so, yeah. And feel free, to, you guys, to put your uh, links into, you know, email me your links and I'll put them in. Because uh, sometimes I have to fish them out of the held for review section. But... Um, yeah. And then also, um, uh, the Earthly Essentials on Etsy, beautiful for jewelry. And she's now making custom-made incense, right? So think of that. Think of somebody tuned in to you and making incense just for you. <laughs> okay, so this is really important here. I... Uh, there's energy to get into your power, to manifest. And I think that you guys are getting stronger and stronger and stronger within your co-creations to know how to manifest. And basically, you know, the simple thing is whenever, whenever you're not getting what you want, look for the block. Look for the false belief that's blocking what you want and work on that. And then it clears it out. 
but you do have to visualize. You do have to keep working it. Now, notice we have, besides that trine there, can you see the sextile here? Up to Neptune. So there's the opportunity for that creative inspiration, the, the visions, and then move on it. <laughs> and of course, this sextile's been going on. All of this has been going on. Um, but look at this tightening up here with Venus. Venus rules art. Art from the heart with, with Leo. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Mercury here. What a lot of a lot of trines. Mercury here to the nose and Uranus. And as Mercury moves this way, it's this is going to tighten up an orb. It's not an orb with, with um, Mars because it's too far out, but right here. Uranus to Mercury. Trying, Uranus, trying Mercury. Uranus is divine mind. Mercury is a messenger. So put those two together and think about what can happen. <laughs> okay, excellent. So with the moon, we have... Um, yeah, we're still in the full moon. That's that's all this is here. We're still in that full moon, but it's the you know the waning full moon from Saturn. So I think we've let let go of um, you know whatever might have been holding us back with feeling like we're beholden to the man. Now this is important. Hold on, sorry, I almost missed this. The sun in this triple square. Here, because the sun's at 19, Mars. So sun square Mars. Mars wants to go, go, you know, be safe. But then the sun in Leo is like, oh, well, I think I'll just shine my light and not worry about it. And I say, go for it, because that'll turn into a strength. You don't have to be perfect. Just put yourself out there. And with uh, Mercury here in Virgo, you can get the details to... Um, harmoniously I'm thinking uh, just let it let it flow so it could be uh, big aha moments and details about the aha moments definitely write things down take notes or you know use your voice voice uh, whatever app on your cell phone and there you go <laughs> so yeah, so the sun, the sun has been in this square already, but now it's involving more than just um, the south node in Uranus. It's beginning to involve Mars, so there's movement there, movement from the heart. Okay, so then Saturday, so for the last day, for the week, let me make sure this is still in frame here. Okay, uh, the sun's at 20 degrees. We're in, you know, just one more day, and we've got an exact opposition here. Let's see how Saturn to the Sun, right? 20 to 21 degrees. Now, it looks to me like Saturn's moved backwards by one, yeah. Let's see how we started out at 22 right here? We're now, we're now down to 21. Um, yeah. So, much tighter orb. Now, the sun opposition Saturn will shine light on how to, oops, how to build something in your life that can help free you. So, again, group consciousness, all things Aquarian, and then because you've got the square. And now the squares, when you're working the energy, they turn into ch to challenges. In my chart, I have a grand sh square, <laughs> natally. I have a lot of trines too, but I mean, it's like whoa, right? But they can turn into strengths. It's not it's not easy when you're young, but you know they, the the squares turn into strengths. So Saturn, with Mars moving away from it, I uh, and the light coming from the sun, and connecting to the past, the wisdom of the past can definitely shine light here and help us free ourselves even more. And that's what this Aquarian energy is all about, right? So like I was saying before, group energy, 
creating win-win situations, seeing, especially with the, the, uh, the sun here in Leo, shining the light on how other people are so unique and noticing what's unique about them. This could, this could make for a really, really wonderful relationship uh, situation for the weekend. Um, yeah, and kind of like relating to each other, I feel like as some, you know, like a, a person who's whole, rather than just, oh yeah, that's that, that guy, that is just my gardener. It's like, no, he's... He's a human being with an entire life with that is much more than that one little job that they do, right? That's what Aquarian energy is all about. And Saturn retrograde helps us learn that. <laughs> so, so there's more equality in in Aquarius. The, the things that we're learning to let go of, and that can sometimes help happen, uh, that can be helped when, when the light of the sun is shining this big spotlight on something. And of course it's on Saturn, but then it's also to the south node, north node. I mean, there's a lot here. Um, and because Saturn is connecting to the south and north node, it's even stronger. So it, we are really needing to get this lesson around um, not being willful, not insisting on like my way or the highway kind of a thing, staying out of drama, staying away from like drama queens and kings, um, letting go of our pride, right? I mean, there's intellectual pride, there's spiritual pride, Right? There's, you know, vanity. There's all of those things where, where we can objectify ourselves and then shine a lot of light on that. And, I mean, my goodness, it's, you know, social media gone bad. So try to be very aware of how other people are very important and, and know that if they're coming from pride, and trying to be basically like special and above others, that they're just coming from fear and their own inner insecurities. So just send them love and light and just, you know, move on. Unless they get in your face and try to hurt you, then that's a whole different situation. Then you got to, you know, stand up for yourself. But, um, yeah. It's interesting that the inconjuncts I was talking about earlier, they are really in effect all week. So those adjustments to how we're thinking, connecting the dots, healing, and healing the past, especially. Yeah. In fact, wait, 17, 14, you know what, you guys? Hold on. Holy moly. We have, we have a yod here. Hold on. Did I miss that yesterday? Was it, was it here yesterday? No. It was, here's what was yesterday. It was Chiron to the south node. So this is what we've had all week. Right here. So yeah, it's 16 degrees, 17 degrees south node. And then sextiling over here to 14 degrees. And as Mercury moves that way, it's going to get even tighter. So all weekend, you know, like even into Saturday, and I would say Monday, uh, you know, so August 13th, 14th, 15th. This is, this is a finger of fate here. So a yod is two tension fields, one harmonious opportunity, or opportunity actually, I should, shouldn't say harmonious, opportunity to heal two tension fields. And you go to the apex of the tension field, and lo and behold, it's Chiron, which is all about healing. So again, back to Aries energy. Healing our abandonment issues. Healing our compulsions, impulsiveness. Healing our, um, well, create win-win situations, you know. Be a little more daring and trailblazing, but come from your individuality, and that doesn't mean that you're better than anyone else, which is kind of what we have to deal with with this <laughs> sun opposing Saturn energy. And if somebody, like I said, is coming from that place of trying to be superior, just know that they're uh, they're very insecure. 
but you know don't don't let him get away with it in your personal life uh let's see anything else the moon is opposing virgo um mercury we, we've got so here, oops here's the moon 10 degrees pisces opposing virgo sometimes pisces virgo can be can be a painful polarity and it's because pisces is all about bliss and virgo is sometimes too focused on the details and it's hard to balance out those two sometimes right so how about how about we work it in the with the quality of <laughs> of trying to create a lot of divine order and structure in our minds but then having lots of play breaks in between so that we're not just so intensely focused to the point where you know like we've got a neck ache or our back is hurting or our head's hurting and we've been up in our head for too long how about we use the energy to to just be deeply in our bodies and but then keep opening up to the love how about we open up to the love for our work open up to the love for our service but do your best to be in your flow because this this really is this polarity of from pisces to virgo is about being in the flow of your being useful being um being in service all right and and making those connections and paying attention to those details um, and then Pisces is, of course, you know, connected to compassion and um, spirituality, uh, you know, empaths. It's a very empathic sign. But you have to be careful about addictions. Um be careful with Mercury and Virgo about self-judgment and thinking, you know, that you need to be perfect before you can do something. No, just be in your flow and go with it. I love to see Pisces energy as the sign of pure potentiality. And, um, yeah, just, just let, let go of feeling victimized. Don't take things so personally. That that's probably like a, a good lifelong lesson for all of us is to just let go of taking thing per, taking things personally. We do have um, a nice uh, trying back up here to to um, and it it will tighten up. We'll get an even stronger trying to the south node in Scorpio. So this is really good for like past life work, past life recall dream time work, uh, meditation to get to the deeper truth, to get inside your real self, let go of any mask, let go of any need to be perfect, but of course be kind, right? Uh, and then with this, it's, it's a little semi-squared up Pluto here, but it's not bad. But there's action that's going to need to be taken. And the, uh, uh, that's the blessing of having the, the sun in Leo. That can get us acting. Uh, get us going, right? But it's also, there's also the energy here for like some good naps and some good rest. <laughs> I like seeing that too. Let's see, anything else with the moon? No, I don't I don't think so. We just have the opposition. So it's moon opposition, Virgo. Um, Mars trying Pluto. I talked about a little bit, but notice how look at look how tight it really is. Look at this. All right. Tighter, tighter, tighter every day. Uh, so more confidence, more self-confidence, less fear. Uh, more motivation with with uh, Mars. Mars is all about motivation, and with Taurus, it's going to be going towards what you want. These are good aspects for um, meditation and uh, exercise. Uh, 
Yeah. It's also good for like managing whatever projects you have going on or managing your personal energy. Or if you happen to be a boss, this could be really good for your, you know, you with your coworkers cuz it'd be good for management, good management skills here. That's especially true too with Saturn in opposition to the sun. There can be a lot of like giving from the heart that uh, helps to build stronger bonds, stronger relationships. So let's see, anything else? Mercury's in that um, exact trine over here to Uranus. So that's good for work too. And those all those aha moments there. Venus is trying uh, Jupiter, yeah, look at that. And that's going to grow even more because Venus is at 2 degrees. Jupiter's at 8. We've got that. Oops. What am I doing? There we go. I'm just making a mess. <laughs> this does not look like a good spirograph, does it? <laughs> anyway, Jupiter trying Venus is awesome because... You know, again, the win-win situations that can grow and help to heal and uh, create something that is really beautiful. Venus and Leo is excellent for um, creating things from the heart, more union with the heart, doing what you love. Doing what you love. So wherever Venus is, lands in your chart and if you or if you have Venus and Leo you are definitely wanting to do what you love for a living you're not going to be wanting to like you know work for others unless you happen to love them as much as the work right which can happen it can totally happen and notice how we have the opposition to Pluto so there can be powerful strong bonds that way <laughs> I'm but yeah, so this has been going on all week, too, and uh, it's, it's still there, and, and this is that, you know, powerful, and partnership, you know, powerful partnership energy. Um, the sun is squaring Uranus here, still. Of course, this is part of that grand trine, but we're, you know, 20 to 18, with Mars in the mix there. Yeah, this is this is actually, um, yeah, just just come from your heart. Uh, that's all I keep getting. The same thing. Come from your heart, as so that your actions align with your heart, and then you, you'll be fine. And and if you if you can't feel your love or find your love, what helps me is to look at something that I love. Uh, be with a pet that you love, be with somebody that you love, think of someone that you love, even if they're not on the planet anymore, just, just still think about all the good times you had and the memories you have. Um, yeah. So, so whatever it takes to get you in the love state, just, it changes everything. It absolutely changes everything. <laughs> And then most of all, with, you know, this, all this extreme, you know, these, the grand square, it, be careful about extremes and excesses, especially with Jupiter and Aries. So, yeah, but any, it looks, to me, it looks like a good week for us personally. You know, overall uh, summary here, it looks to me like a good week for us personally, a lot of energy to get what we want and move towards it and have it and experience it but it also looks like a pretty good week for um uh you know getting some justice get getting some justice seeing justice i think it's going to be quite some time before it's completely you know things and i don't even know if all of it is going to be able to be completely healed but some new laws can be written and uh, put into force and old laws that have been written but haven't been enforced in the past can begin to be enforced this is what this you know square is here going on so yeah so okay so that's that's it for this week <laughs> hope you guys are all doing really really well okay bye